Welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today, I am pulling out the sheet pans because I am making sheet pan recipes. So I'm Kristen, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you love simple, easy recipes, then this is a perfect place to be. I am making five delicious sheet pan recipes that literally anyone can make. Now I love these because you can usually get like some sort of meat or main dish and then you have like a side dish that goes with it. So super simple, super easy and way less dishes than lots of other recipes. Let's just jump right into it. The first recipe I'm making is sheet pan meatloaf and green beans. Now this is not your regular meatloaf. We're gonna make meatloaf balls. They're gonna cook a little bit faster and it'll be just easier to eat for everyone. You're gonna start with one to one and a half pounds of ground beef. You can use ground turkey too. You're just gonna dump it into your bowl. Next, you're gonna crack two eggs into the bowl. Then you're just gonna dump in the onions. Then add one fourth cup of ketchup. I just like to eyeball the fourth a cup. Then you're just gonna add salt and pepper to taste. The last thing you're gonna add is just one cup of oats. On top of the oats, you're gonna add half a cup of Italian style breadcrumbs. Then I have my tomato soup. I'm just gonna add half of it right now. Now we're just gonna mix it all together. Now this is called a chop and stir. It actually helps you cook meat. I use, use it on the skillet, but I actually love using it for meatloaf because it kind of just mixes everything together and it doesn't really stick. <laughs> too badly. Sometimes it doesn't mix as well as you want, so roll up your sleeves, wash your hands first, and it just works better. I can just mix it with my hands. All right, when it's all mixed, you're just going to set it aside. Now you're gonna take the other half of your tomato sauce and put it into a small bowl. This is gonna be your topping. Then I have two tablespoons of brown sugar and two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever you call it. Then you're just gonna mix it all together. Okay, we are ready. You're gonna take your sheet pan and spray it with non-stick cooking spray. Then you're gonna cut up a pound of beans and just add it onto the tray. Kinda all over. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil to my beans and a little bit of garlic salt. Then you're just gonna mix the olive oil so it kinda coats the green beans. Okay, now we are ready for our meatloaf. Then you're gonna take your meatloaf and roll it into 12 balls. Then you're just gonna kind of make a place for it around the beans. There we go, we need 12 of these. Then you're gonna take the sauce that you made and just put it over each meatloaf ball. All right, once they're covered, it's time to throw them in the oven, 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. Then when they're done, they are nice and crispy on top. You just pull them right out. All plated up, ready to go. Let's give it a little bite. Mmm, I love meatloaf. It's one of my favorites. So the next recipe I'm making is sheet pan chicken pot pie. These are all the ingredients you'll need to make it. First, we're gonna melt two tablespoons in a medium-high heat saucepan. Into the saucepan, we have one onion, four stalks of celery, I like to do in little chunks, then two potatoes, you can use red potatoes, but I'm using russet potatoes today, and then I just cut up two carrots. And you're just gonna saute it for about eight to 10 minutes. So it's been about eight minutes, now we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. Then we're just gonna add some salt and pepper to taste. Two teaspoons of garlic. Now we're going to make it a little bit thicker, so we need to add a fourth cup of flour. Then just mix that all in. Now I like it really creamy, so we're gonna add just eight ounces of cream cheese. Okay, so you're gonna add two cups of chicken. Now you can use a rotisserie chicken. I cook this in the Instant Pot. If you want my recipe of how to cook it in the Instant Pot, I'll put it down below for you in the description. So this is where you'll add about a half a cup of peas, frozen peas, but I forgot them, so we're just doing it without peas today. So while that's finishing up, we're gonna spray this with non-stick cooking spray. Then we're just gonna spread it around the sheet pan. Now we're just gonna take some puff pastry sheets. That's gonna go on the top. Then you're just going to open up your pastry sheet and then just cut it into one inch strips. Then you're gonna take the puff pastry and kind of stretch it a little bit 
so it will hit both ends. So we'll take this one, stretch it. There we go. You just want to make sure there's a little space in between each strip. Now we're just going to crack one egg and put it in our bowl. Go ahead and break the oak and mix that all up. Then we're just going to lightly brush the egg onto the puff pastry. Then you're just gonna put it in your oven at 400 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. This cooked for 30 minutes. You could even go like 20 to 25. These are a little more brown than I like, but it will still work. I'm just gonna put it onto my plate. A little bit of parsley on top. Ready to serve. Let's try it out. That was really good. Super easy, I love it. So the third sheet pan I'm making is called Chicken Sausage and Vegetables. This one is one of my most favorites because it's super easy to put together. You don't have to pre-cook any meat. You just put it all in the sheet pan, cook it, and dinner is ready. I'm gonna start with one of my favorite things is this chicken and apple sausages. I love them because they don't have as nearly as much fat and they're just a little bit better for you. I like to have it into small slices. They're easier to eat. Okay, now that all the sausage is cut up, I also cut up my onions, pretty small pieces, I like them small. Carrots, I did small slices, zucchini, and then a lot of potatoes. And then add all my vegetables. Okay, so now that we have all the ingredients ready to go, we're going to drizzle on about two tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm just eyeballing this. We're just drizzling a little bit on all of it. Then we're gonna go ahead and just coat this. You want the olive oil to just go over everything. Next, we're gonna add some garlic salt and some poultry seasoning. Now, you're just going to season this on just to taste. So, however much you like, that's what you're gonna add. So, I just kinda like to spread it on everywhere. Okay, now for the poultry seasoning. Again, just kind of spread it on everything. Once your seasonings are on, you're just going to mix it up one more time, then we're ready to cook. Now we're all ready to cook, 400 degrees, 20 minutes. Okay, they're all done cooking and it looks amazing. Let's try a bite. It's really good. The next recipe I'm making is one pan chicken fajitas. Now I love this because I can cook my chicken and my vegetables all at the same time. Then you just fill them in a tortilla, super simple. The first thing we're gonna do is to lay the chicken tenders onto the sheet pan. Next we're gonna add either taco seasoning or fajita seasoning, whatever you have. We're gonna add about half of the packet on top of the chicken. Next I'm gonna take a jar of salsa. I love Herdez salsa and we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salsa on top of the chicken also. Okay, so I cut up a yellow pepper and a red pepper, and then I also cut up an onion. Now you can do your onion in strips, but my kids don't really love onions, so I'm trying to hide them, so I did small pieces for my onions. Then we're just gonna pour this right on top of your chicken. You can do it in between, you can do it on top, it doesn't really matter. Now for the onions. Now I'm just gonna add the rest of the taco seasoning right on top. And then we're gonna drizzle everything with a little bit of olive oil. Okay, this is all ready to cook. So we're gonna cook it at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. All right, when you're all done, you're just gonna take it and put it in a tortilla and add your most favorite toppings. So if you notice, I'm using whole wheat tortillas just to make it a little bit healthier. So if you're going healthier, whole wheat's the way to go. All right, ready? So good. <laughs> and the last recipe I'm making is baked pork chops and potatoes. I love this. Pork chops and potatoes are cooked at the same time. You're first gonna add three fourths cup of Italian seasoning into a bowl. A teaspoon of Italian seasoning and then a half cup of Parmesan and then just mix that all together. All right, so I'm gonna line my cookie sheet with foil. Then you're just gonna spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. All right, so first you're gonna take one of your pork chops. Now mine has a bone in it, it doesn't matter. So bone in or without a bone, that's great. So you're gonna put it into a half a cup of your melted butter and then into your Italian seasoning mixture. And you're gonna press it pretty good, then flip it, then press it again. Then it's just gonna go right onto your pan. All right, once they're all done, let's head on over to the potatoes. All right, now it's time for the potatoes. So I have about five potatoes that I chopped up. 
Again, I like to do bite-sized pieces just because they're easier to eat. We'll just dump them right into a bowl. Then I'm just gonna drizzle the top with a little bit of olive oil and then some salt and some pepper. Then you're just gonna mix this to coat all of the potatoes. So then you're just gonna dump the potatoes all around the pork chops. We want them to be touching the foil because they'll cook a little bit better. Then you just wanna spread them out, making sure they're not on top of each other. Then you're just gonna cook these for 400 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, when it's all done cooking, you're gonna go ahead and plate up your pork chops and your potatoes. Now, I also like to serve this with a delicious side salad. Mm. Now, if you want more easy recipes just like this one, make sure that you subscribe and push the bell notification so you don't miss any of my uploads. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.